Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to part 10 of the ephemera making for junk journals. Today we will be making these fabric envelopes. We're using up book pages to give them stability and we're using up our fabric pieces. You can use anything you can get your hands on. I've got some old curtains here, I've got some lace fabrics, I've got upholstery fabrics, sheer fabrics. You can use an old blouse that has a stain on it somewhere that you can't wear anymore. Cut it up and use it in this project. So we will go through the very simple steps of making them and then at the end I will go through some of the ideas on how you can further decorate them if you wish even though they look just fine as they are depending on what kind of a fabric you use. So for example something like this perhaps I will just leave it as it is. So let's get to it. For this project you will need your sewing machine but if you don't have a sewing machine you still can make the project instead of the sewing part when we get to the sewing part you just use your glue however keep that in mind when you're choosing your fabric for fabric like this a thick upholstery fabric you can use your glue but then when you're using something like this that's a lace and it's got lots of little areas where the glue can seep through perhaps it's not going to work so for even something very sheer like this it might not work so just keep that in mind when you're choosing your fabrics so first things first when choosing a book page you want to look for a book page that is quite long for example if you have something like this so you can see that this is smaller that's about the size of my hand when you make it into the envelope you get quite a little envelope which is also fine but you can see the difference so it's just something to keep in mind if you have a book that's got quite a long larger page perfect so you want your book page and then choose your fabric um, for demonstration purposes today I'm going to use this fabric it's upholstery fabric no need to iron anything I haven't anyway I haven't iron been ironing because I try to glue it down sort of nice and flat. You want to have a quick check of the book page that you're using. You don't want any swear words or negative words like killing or death or I don't know cancer or something like that. So just choose which side is going to be your upside meaning when you open it you'll be able to see a little bit of it up here. So that's what I mean. You don't want to open this and then see some word that uh, evokes negative emotion and when gluing, gluing it down this gluing is not supposed to keep the fabric in place forever it's supposed to keep the fabric in place while you're sewing so then you would glue it down trying to save fabric perfect so I'm just going to trim a little bit of this fabric so it's not in my way when I'm sewing okay and now I'm going to sew this down I will do it on camera but before I start I'm just going to let you know that I'm going to start sewing from the bottom right corner and I'm going to sew all the way around and I'm not sewing from this side because I can't see where my paper is I'm sewing right on top of the book page you can see on this one sewing right on top of the book page Okay, I know this will be hard to see, but I'm starting on the left hand corner, like I said, the bottom corner. And the main thing is, as you're sewing, you want to make sure that your fabric is not moving. That's why we glued the page down, so that the fabric isn't moving. When I'm doing this part, I don't just sew straight through like this. I actually curve it up a little bit, like this, as I know you can't see. It's very hard. I, I'm actually holding it up like this when I'm sewing so I'll try and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing so it's just that long side that needs to be flapped up or down when we're making the envelope that's the part that I try and keep curved while I'm sewing we'll talk about it more in a sec So after I finished my sewing, I just want to make sure that I'm pulling, oh, this is totally optional, but I want to make sure I'm pulling all, all of my threads on the inside and then I will tie a knot. So all of my threads are on the inside and now I'm just going to tie a knot. 
Okay, so now I, if you have pinking shears, even better, you can see these beautiful edges, but it's not necessary. Uh, I've made envelopes, you know, with just trimming down all of the excess. So I'm going to use my pinking shears for this one. So, and you don't even need to do all of the edges. You can just do the top and the bottom. So here's what it looks like when you do all of the edges with the pinking shears. And here's what it looks like when you just do top and bottom. So oh, it's very hard to see on this fabric, but you can see that there, and then you can see that there, but then the sides are straight. So it's up to you. And now, now the sides, I'm gonna go straight down and I'm gonna follow the book page. And now I like to do, get any fraying that needs to happen. I like to do that at this point. Okay, so uh, when I was sewing, remember how I said, I don't just sort of put it straight through. I try and curve it up like this. Uh, the reason why is because we are folding it into an envelope, which means that we need slightly more fabric than the paper. I'm trying to explain it the way I understand it in my mind. Because we are folding this way and this way, we need to have a tiny, tiny, like a fraction, a little bit more fabric. And uh, when I was making this one, for example, when I folded it up, what I was found, finding is that my paper inside was crunching up because there just wasn't enough fabric. It was this one, actually. And the paper inside, see down the bottom, it's crunched up and then it was having a real hard time to sort of keep it flat down and it just seemed like the fabric was stretching too much. So I don't know, it, it probably depends on the type of fabric that you use. If you have something that's a little bit elasticated, maybe it won't make that problem. But uh, what I found is that if I'm just holding it curved like this, as I'm sewing through, so I'm just hold, holding it curved like that, passing it through my sewing machine, I found that it eliminates the problem. So I don't know, hopefully I'm making sense. So the next thing that we do is we're going to flip the bottom up and you can choose where you want to go, like how, how tiny of a flap you want or, you know, whatever you do, whatever you want to do here at this point. And so I'm just flipping that down. I'm just going to score it down a little bit. So we could have, like I said, I wrote it down here. We could have folded it down and then went around it with our sewing machine. But uh, I really like to have this sewing up here, which we wouldn't have if we just went around the machine this way. And I didn't want to have any sewing down here. So it's just the way that I've been doing it. But if you want to avoid this step now where we are actually gluing the sides, then you might as well just put it through the machine this way. So now the next thing that we do is we use our glue. You use the glue that you have. Uh, fabric tack or whatever you know anything will work really PVA glue because it's just paper on the inside so I like to use this uh, boil glue glue it's quite fast drying and it's similar to fabric tack and we just glue the sides down usually I'll, I like to leave it under something heavy to dry and now we're going to flip and I'm flipping this top flap down I usually leave a little bit of space up here. Here we go. So you will find that the envelope doesn't want to stay closed straight away. So I've been keeping them under something heavy to dry. Uh, I mean, you know, I just kept them under something heavy overnight and then they're fine. So that, that completes the process. Uh, I'm thinking they look quite nice as they are, just as they are like this, to be placed into journals and into pockets and things like that. But I just wanted to see and try my hand at decorating the flap a little bit or decorating the envelope a little bit just to see how it's going to look like if we take that extra step to decorate. In part six of the ephemera making series, we made these fabric scrappies where we were using leftover bits and pieces of fabrics and stuff like that to make these embellishments, I guess, and they can go on anything, including envelopes. So let's say, for example, Something like this. If you've already made them up, look at that. I think that looks just beautiful. And it just adds an extra little something. So the way that I would pop that on is I would glue it on. And that's what I'm going to do right now. 
Let's see. I like it. I think that looks quite good. How about this one? I'm actually really liking them with something on top. Even something like this, a little die cut that's glued on top like this would look quite nice. This is a rather big one, but I kind of like it. A big scrappy, beautiful. And these can be little little envelopes for gift cards and stuff like that. Not that we'll, we'll be giving many gift cards these dark times we are in. Oh, and how about this? Maybe some little nice trim if you've got something like that. Or oh, just made this the other day, like a little snippet roll thing. So maybe even a little bit of a snippet roll. Maybe not the whole thing. Maybe something like that. Something like that. Let's see, what else can we use? Maybe a little layered flower. Let's see. Maybe use a little bread. Let's see how that's going to look. Approximate. Lee, maybe somewhere there. Something like that. It's not bad. I think so far I'm really liking the fabric scrappy clusters. We can even use paper scraps, uh, paper clusters, so something like that. And now I just need a center for that paper cluster. So I'm just going to head into my little baggie that I've got over here. This is part nine of the ephemera making for junk journals. So you have all of these little bits and pieces ready to go when you're decorating. So these are just some decorating ideas for you guys. If you wish to proceed and decorate your little envelopes, they can, of course, stay just as they are. I think they look beautiful just like that. Little fabric envelopes, especially in journals. You know, if you want to put them into pockets, you don't want to have anything that's too three-dimensional uh, bulking up your journal. But if you're gifting it to someone, you're putting it into Happy Mail and stuff like that, then, you know, you can go ahead and decorate them. So it really depends on what you're using it for. I hope you like this video. I'm going to give you an opportunity to screenshot these in just a moment. And here we go. So it's uh, quite a straightforward, easy thing to do. The results are beautiful and it's just an extra little piece of something that you can put in your journals. Please subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you get notified of new videos. Thank you so much for being here today and I'll see you in my next video.